was a nightmare. Pay attention. Cameron D'Ambrosio, a Massachusetts high school student, uh, was arrested by authorities for posting videos of himself uh, performing an original rap song that he wrote. But the authorities arrested him because he said uh, the song contained disturbing verbiage and it mentioned the White House and, and the marathon bombings. Ooh, it's just a friggin' song. Now the, kid's, the kid is facing 20 years in prison for, uh, for, for terroristic threats or, or whatever the hell. It's just a song for God's sake. Let the kid go and apologize to him for being a bunch of assholes. Pay attention, might learn something. It's a nightmare that there ain't no waking up from. Land of the formerly free, home of corruption, boss guns. All right, everybody, this is King of Pot. Uh, I've taken a little sidetrack to our marijuana legalization efforts uh, today because uh, I found out about a case through this guy, Garrett Kirkland, uh, about a certain individual named Cameron D'Ambrosio. D'Ambrosio. 18, he's an 18 year old. You know what you were when you were 18, and he posted some lyrics on Facebook. Why don't you fill us in on what is happening, why we all came out today to support the family, what it means to be here today, why we're here defending the that we're putting on Facebook, because everybody, including the Commonwealth of Mass, thought it was a threat. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, approximately May 1st, uh, there was a, a student, um, possibly with an axe to grind, had reported a lyric that Cameron posted on a Facebook message. Um, you know, basically they responded to this lyric that said he was going to, he was comparing his popularity thing, very non-specific, very, you know, just the kind of crap that 18 year old kids say, especially like doing the hip hop stuff, it was all lyrics. So basically the, the student, you know, most likely seems like with an axe to grind, reports it to the, the school, Methuen High School. Methuen High School then informs the, um, the police officer on duty there that, hey, you know, check this out. So then the officer, I believe it was Patrolman James Meller, picks up Cameron about an hour later after this report comes in. And, you know, even according to his own report, he was, he was polite and was cooperative during and after the arrest. Basically, they're trying to get this non-specific lyric that he made and post it as a terroristic threat. It goes beyond, like, what you can even comprehend. Like, we've all said stupid things like, dude, I could kill you right now. Like, does that mean I'm going to go and kill you and should face 20 years for a terroristic charge? No, there's no, there's no actual thing there. And his was even more vague than something like that. There was no specific person, there was no specific time, no specific method. It was just rapping lyrics, and that was it. So we're here today as a purely First Amendment free speech beef. Um, you know, there have been statutes set in the, I believe it was the 60s and 70s in the Supreme Court where, you know, they can infringe your freedom of speech. There has to be a specific threat mentioned. A specific, and so there was no actual specific threat. This was just a bunch of lyrics that were put on uh, Facebook that I, I hear that a couple of kids had seen from the school and reported it. Exactly, exactly. Just a bunch of lyrics. I mean, anyone that's listening to hip hop or any kind of music at all, it's, I'm sure they've heard much worse. And whether you, you know, agree with the lyrics of what he said, if, if you find it distasteful or tasteful or whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, he did not make a specific threat. He should not be held for 20, facing 20 years as a felony communicating terroristic threats. We, we find this to be a complete mockery of our, of our judicial system, a complete mockery of our constitution. Um, and there's a lot of people here today that are, are taking up arms over this because this is just an outrage. Yeah, we're not going to let this go. I mean, this is happening right here in Massachusetts. And uh, I, I think it's a travesty. And I watched the proceedings in there. And we had felt that maybe he was going to either dismiss the case or at least let him get out until they want to pursue whatever uh, the Commonwealth wants to pursue. I think the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, from looking at everything, is just trying to make a name for themselves. We've got the Methuen Police Department that actually made this happen. Yeah, Methuen Police Department made the actual arrest. Uh, there's, you know, speculation about they may have made some un honest statements. Um, I need to look further into that, so, mm -hmm. you know, I can't say that's fact. Um, but there's there's a lot of things going on, and, and everywhere you look, the prosecutor, the courts, the, the everyone is grasping at straws to hold this kid. Um, like today, they have no real reason for why they're going to put off the trial for another month. Another, another month, man, I know. Another month, another 30 days being held for something he said, a non-specific threat, another month. So that would be how long has this, 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 this young guy has been in jail now? He's just over a month. Uh, May the 1st was when he was picked up, I believe, around 1.30 p.m. Um, so, I mean, now we're facing June 3rd. We're, you know, we're just passing a month. It's, it's 
complete travesty. Methuen police, you should be ashamed of yourself. Anybody in, in this case trying to prosecute this guy, and I don't usually come out political here, but this is a goddamn travesty. Methuen police, what are you trying to do? Make a name for yourself? I see your little Commonwealth of Massachusetts people in there trying to make a name of themselves. I've been trying to make a name for myself too, but not the way you try to do on the backs of poor people like that. That's disgusting. My, my tax money and everything that I pay you people to protect, I don't pay you to protect shit like this, okay? And I'm really pissed off what I'm seeing and I'm gonna make sure that this gets out to the forefront as best as I can. I'm gonna keep following this. Just one more thing is even if they dismiss this case today or in a month from now when they hear this again, this young man still lost, as of today, a month of his life, as of the next hearing, two months of his life for freedom of speech. But you know what? In power and people sticking together, this stuff is going to stop. And this stuff is not going to happen because we're going to make sure, even if we're not well, well known people, we're going to get the word out to the people that are walking the streets, the people, the everyday common man. Not what the news people want to let you hear, that you hear on channel 7, 4, and 5, because they're only giving you the filtered news. We try to give the real news, and that's why we're here today. I'd like to talk to a few more people. Pay attention. What's your name? Joshua. I go by Chance. Chance, and I hear you have an organization yourself. Yeah, we represent Revolution is Evolution. I also represent Torn Records. I'm a musician. That's why this hits home to me. You write lyrics, and I'm sure you must have wrote some pretty cool lyrics. I've, I've said a lot worse, and okay. I'll continue to say things that I want to say. I have free speech, and for me, when I saw you know a, another artist, especially a young artist, that his lyrics were taken out of context and made into a terrorist threat, where they are obviously not a terrorist threat. We can't just stay quiet, you know, so I came out to the court to support his family, you know, support everyone that's going through this. All right, we can't allow this to happen again, you know what I mean? We all have a constitution, we're all protected by it. Like you said, we need to let people in the streets know what's going on. Why isn't Fox News covering this? But they were here the day it happened because, oh, it's great news, you know, and they wanted to say, oh, look, they got a terrorist. And I, I just want to say great job to the Methuen Police Department for arresting a poor little 18-year-old kid, you know, great job, awesome. Great job. And you know, revolution is evolution. We will be at every court date and we will be out in the streets protesting. We will be handing out flyers, pamphlets. This will not be the last you guys hear of this. So we're here to say free Cameron D'Ambrosio and protect your freedom of speech. So free Cam! Thank you very much for being on KOP Productions. If you was oh we got Frank Capone, two hot heads on activism with Mike Can. You're representing Mike Can today because he's working and uh, I know you guys did a show this past Saturday which I did not catch, which I'm gonna catch when I get home. Tell us a little what brought you out and also got you guys to cover this. Yeah, so I, I ended up uh, bringing this story to Mike's attention. Uh, we've been talking about it for the last, you know, three or four weeks on our radio show and uh, probably like one of the only radio shows, you know, media outlets that is really talking about it and talking about the injustice that's going on here, you know. And um, so when we, when we, you know, followed the case and realized um, that Cam was still in jail, we were like, wait a minute, you know, like this is this is a transgression that, that is against every activist, you know. This isn't a just, a just against some young kid who wanted to say some stuff on Facebook, you know. Um, this is about us as activists and, and, and what we can say and what we can do and the, and the power that the government has or the state has to come in and, you know, lay the hammer down. Mm -hmm. and so we came out today, you know, in mass with the people's hammer, you know, and uh, I just wanted to get up and encourage everybody to come out on uh, June 27th at 11 a.m. at the Lawrence District Courthouse here um, and uh, make sure that uh, we have bigger numbers than we had today and that we are going to um, do everything that we can to uh, make sure that Cam gets, him, gets, out, of, uh, gets out of jail and, uh, you know, justice is done. That would be great, Frank. Well, thank you, uh, you and Mike, covering it on the radio because that's uh, how I got news of it was through Mike and, you know, reading all the posts and the things that you guys did and then Garrett taking it to the next level to organize everybody here. Let's hope nothing like this ever happens again. Maybe we bring some awareness. We're not trying to chastise the police or, or anything like that. We know you're trying to do your job, but think. Think before you do something like this because we live in a free speech society and we want to maintain that. Exactly. And like, you know, when you talk about the, the police, right, and, and the police have to do the job, well, there's such a thing as officer's discretion, right, where, you know, a, an officer can decide whether or not they want to take you in or they, you know, for whatever charge it is, you know? I mean, because I'm sure plenty of people out there watching right now have been busted by a cop smoking some weed and they just told you to put the weed out on the ground, stomp it out and be on your way, right? Right. And so this, this kid right now didn't do anything, didn't threaten anybody, and he's in jail. And, and, and they were just like, 
I, we, you know, we heard a report that the officer who was on duty at the school didn't want to arrest him, so they had to send another officer to actually come and arrest him because the, the, the dude who was on, the officer that was on duty knew that it was bullshit. Well, all those people up there know it's bullshit. You know, yeah. you've got the prosecutor and everyone else, and they're all up there, you know, and they're laughing and they're joking, and they have a good time, and they're having a good time. But the fact of the matter is, is that the kid's in jail. He's in jail. He's locked up with criminals. It's like they have no mindset of what they're doing to this kid. They think more of what they're going to look like in their future, in their job, if this was, in fact, a real, let's say, terrorist case. They have illusions of grandeur, you know? Exactly. No, they're Chewbacca right now with yeah. their illusions of grandeur. I mean, absolutely. And we're going to make justice happen here with the people's hammer. Very good. That's the people's hammer. Remember what I said. All of us joining together, if you don't know the family, look it up, okay? You need to support those, even those that you don't know, for the rights that you believe in. Because this could happen to you, could happen to me, could happen to anybody in your family. You'd want the support yourself, especially if you knew that injustice was being done like it's being done in this case right now. This guy, no introduction, you know him as uh, Rich Food, Perceptions of a Mao Man on the KOP Production Counterculture Radio Network. And this man was getting very upset upstairs. In fact, after we left, he got the bailiffs uh, a little worried that they started calling uh, some uh, additional support, but we left just in time. Rich. You came down here, you, 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 you tried to get out of work and push your stuff to come down here. What made you come down on somebody you don't even know like Cam? What made you come down to this? Well, I don't know this kid at all, never met him. In fact, I can barely pronounce his name. But the idea is, he's my brother. He is a fellow citizen. And by the very definition of patriotism, it has nothing to do with the love of my country, but the love of the people within it. My brothers, my sisters. And what I got from this case, by speaking to the father and seeing what's going on there today, is this kid was bullied at school, he was beat down, didn't want to go to school anymore, and decided to finally express himself in a way that he felt he could to regain his pride, his own redemption, make a no physical, actual threat. And the ha what happened was these bullies that did beat him up are the ones that complained to toy with him, to mess with him. Yeah, that, that we didn't bring up yet. That is true. It's the, the same bullies that beat him up reported him for his lyrics. And then you get to what we've seen here today, which is just disgusting. Now, the prosecution comes in and says they need more time because 30 days isn't enough to go through somebody's hard drive. Meanwhile, if you give me your computer, I'll have it done in 30 seconds. Now, what they're doing is they're trying to take whatever they can for wording to twist it to whatever they can and however they can use it to further their own careers and further their own names. You have two young females in there prosecuting this that let go a, a rapist mm -hmm. that raped a 15-year-old girl. Let him go on $2,000 bail. Yet this kid, because it's a big case now, they're going to sit here and play hardball. Well, you know what? I hope their careers fail because they have just decided to make their, loves, their lives off the blood off their brother's back. Yes. Their fellow citizens to castrate them, to cut their throats so their blood can be theirs for their own name and their own glory. No. You know, let me tell you something, people. A lot of these people like to wave around the flag. In fact, there's a huge American flag right behind the judge's stand. I got nauseated seeing it. You want to know why? Because when I see those colors, I see all the soldiers, all the people that have bled for our civil rights, that have let themselves die in streets, in wars. People that would not sit down when they knew somebody else's ass was on the line. And what that means here today is that I cannot dishonor those who that have fallen. I cannot dishonor those that have fought for our country to be what it is today. I will not let them die in vain. And when this kid is sitting there in jail, for over 30 days and going to be sitting until two, June 27th at least. That speaks to everybody that has bled for that flag, that has cried for that flag, and has felt the pain of that flag. And they fought exactly for what I'm wearing here and what we're fighting for in there is free speech. And so help me God, I will not sit down until this is situated, this is settled, and this does not happen again. This is my country, this is your country, this is all of our country, not theirs. They serve us, we do not serve them. Amen on that. Well, you heard it from Rich Fru, Perceptions of a Madman. Thank you very much, Rich. I just want to show everybody that had come, all these guys in back of us, supported Cam today. 
and I just want to introduce Evan. And uh, your group is uh, Center for Rights? Yep, that's right. I'm with Center for Rights and Fight for the Future. Uh, we started the petition for Cameron D'Ambrosio that's now garnered over 90,000 signatures from civil rights and free speech advocates from all over the world. People are watching this case very closely. Uh, and, you know, really what's at stake here today, it's not just the First Amendment. Uh, and that's why I'm here. I'm here for free speech. But I'm also here because a young man has been held away from his family for over a month. Uh, and, you know, really no evidence has been given that shows shows that he is a danger to anyone in the community. No evidence shows that he intended for this speech that he posted on his Facebook to threaten anyone, to give anyone concern. Uh, and what's really important that we remember is that free speech is about protecting all free speech. So whether you agree with it or not is not relevant here. We need to protect speech at the margins uh, because every day that the Cameron D'Ambrosio sits in jail is a day that the First Amendment is being undermined. It's a day that the Constitution is being yes. undermined. Uh, and it's a day that justice is being denied to, to someone from our, from, from our town. So we're not going to stand for that. We're here. We're going to be in court every day that Cam needs support. Uh, and we're going to be here the day that he walks out because we know that that day will come. Uh, the prosecution doesn't have a case here. They're grasping at straws. Uh, and that's unacceptable. And so we're going to be here. We'll be here every day. Our numbers will grow. Uh, and we'll be here until Cam walks out. And if you can sign that petition at freecameron.org, you can join those 90,000 people and add your voice at freecameron.org. That's it. Yes, sir. That's it. And that's about it right here. We're reporting live at the Lawrence Courthouse. Everybody give a big yell. Free Cam! Free Cam! Free Cam! Free Cam! If you don't know about it, find out. Being a part, reporting live from Lawrence Courthouse in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Hey, Peace. You might learn something. It's a nightmare that there ain't no waking up from Land of the formerly free, home of corruption Boss guns, bury weapons and trust none Cause if we don't come together, we out of luck, son It's a nightmare that there ain't no waking up from Land of the formerly free, home of corruption Boss guns, bury weapons and trust none Cause if we don't come together, we out of luck, son I'm really hoping one day I'll open my eyes And this will all just be a nightmare we was living inside This just can't be real, I don't I wanna believe it Bioengineered diseases My mind can't conceive this Wolves in sheepskin Teaching the preachings of Jesus Are as evil as Satan himself Look where they leave us Is it all to mislead us? All of the lies that you teach us? You lost the trust of the people Now you can't reach us If this a Christian nation Tell me what you call it Ephraimian Grove We all be worshipping Moloch They hide symbols on our bills But they won't tell the truth to you That's the all-seeing eye Of the one they call Lucifer